So I'm not one to go in for the whole ranty, bloggy kind of style of video, but I felt that I really should for this. Because today, I woke up to the great news, there's going to be a new DC Wonder Woman book. And there was much rejoicing. I mean, I love Wonder Woman. I really, really love Wonder Woman. And then we found it's a book with Superman focusing on their relationship. Yes, one and Superman now officially a couple, and DC are determined to ram that idea down our throats, really home hammering home the fact that Wonder Woman is now defined by her relationship to Superman. This is annoying for a couple of reasons, and I'm going to try and go into them. This is going to get ranty. Because this totally ignores the origin of Wonder Woman, both in canon and why she was created in DC have a major issue with female characters right now. They don't have any. I mean, think about it. Apart from Wonder Woman, name a DC female character who is lead of her series. I know you've all just gone to Catwoman, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, Batgirl. All of those are a B-roll in the Batman universe. Sure, you now have... Uh, Birds of Prey, and you also have Suicide Squad, led by Ivy and Harley, respectively, but they're still B-roll to the main Batman continuity. DC only have Wonder Woman. So, what are they going to do? They're going to ship her with Superman and go away. This isn't helped by the writer, Charles Sewell, I hope I'm saying his name correctly, because that's going to really undermine this rant, has been on Twitter making some posts, and some of them are just, oh, Christ, I, I shudder to think what's going through his mind at times. Just to quickly clarify a couple of them for you. He's basically saying that someone asked, will we be more superhero outfits or more civilian outfits? So are we going to see more character-driven or not character-driven sort of um, hero or their civilian life? His response, a good mix, and sometimes they'll be wearing neither. Yes, we're going to see Wonder boning. And as Saul himself said, anyone can bone, not so many can fly. So yeah, now officially the feminist icon of Wonder Woman is now basically best sold as someone else's pet girlfriend. Now... I know what you're thinking. Characters change. Characters develop. It happens, and surely it's a natural, logical step for Superman and Wonder Woman to go together. No, it's really not. And this really annoys me. Because when I was growing up, there were three characters, I can say, that taught me that as a male-bodied individual, it was okay to embody the feminine. The feminine wasn't a weaker part of the male. That was Sailor Jupiter, Sarah Jane Smith from Doctor Who, and Wonder Woman. So why is this really, really annoying? Well, we have to go way back into the past, way back to the Second World War, to discuss the origin of Wonder Woman. And this is an origin DC hate. Wonder Woman was written by a guy called Charles Moulton Marston. He was a psychologist, a very, very successful psychologist. He believed in a concept of matriarchy. See, Wonder Woman isn't even an origin, her, isn't even a feminist origin. Marston did not believe in feminism. He believed in matriarchy. E.g. women in control. And you, can you really blame him? He had seen the First World War, he had seen the Second World War brewing in Europe. Of course, you can see why someone would think that. Dumb, old, white European males have driven the world to war, have driven millions of men to their deaths for the second time now. How badly can women do after two world wars? One of which, I know in the UK, killed about two-thirds of all the young men. But he believed no woman would want to take on the role of power because the image of femininity was weak. So, he wanted to create a character that had all the feminine characteristics, but all the force of a male character. And he based these on his two wives. Martin had 
two wives. He was Polly before Polly was even technically a thing. So, he created Wonder Woman, taking off the original Amazon mythos. Now this, if you're like me and come from a semiotics background, is very important. He attached his symbol to an already existing symbol so he could make a new signifier. Now to most people that probably means nothing, but to me that uh, makes me want to applaud the man and to give him props for being very, very clever. Look at Golden Age Wonder Woman. And look at how it portrays femininity. We have Paradise Island, which is now Themyscira. This idea where there has been no men for years, and they have reached utopia. Sure, it's a simplistic utopia, and probably politically incorrect, but it's still a utopia. They can travel in time, they can raise the dead. They don't die, they're strong. They prime each other for ritualistic combat that never seems to really happen, apart from bullets and bracelets. Compare that to war-torn Europe for a second. In your head, think, reading, reading that as a small child in World War II, you're presented with these two very differing images. War-torn Europe, where men are being sent to their deaths, versus Paradise Island. The powerful male leadership of Europe have just, again, caused war. Paradise Island is entirely female-led, and is utopic. It's beyond the realms of even the most fantastical American imagination. That was deliberate. That was definitely a deliberate move by Marston. To point out the flaws in modern American society. And why else was Wonder Woman this great icon? Because of how she was presented. When you look at a uh, Golden Age Wonder Woman comics, you realise that Wonder Woman does very little in the comics. Wonder Woman is often not the main character. She is merely our guide through this World War II setting, which is a lot more of her work as Diana Price. Why? Because that allows other heroes to come out. One of Wonder Woman's actual superpowers, and I'd say it's probably Wonder Woman's top superpower, is finding the heroism in others. So many stories she motivates clerical and secretarial workers to stand up and fight for themselves. She gets the Baroness and turns her into a hero by teaching her the ways of the Amazon. Yes, Wonder Woman had a sympathetic Nazi character in the middle of World War II who became a long-running sidekick. You're seeing where I'm coming from here. This is a big thing. Wonder Woman motivated, be it the Holiday Girls, she helps them find the heroism in them, in their selves. She teaches Etta Candy and all her girls that they can be the heroes. She's coming into the real world to motivate women who are being pulled into the factories with notions of we can do it and saying, yes, you can do it. But you can do more than that. You're not just here to work in the factories while the war is on. You can change the world. You can take power. You can create a new world. One of the, uh, one more panel, she tells the group of secretarial workers, get strong and earn your own living. That, to 40s America, that's not some motivational poster. That's a battle cry. That is a controversial decree of war on a patriarchal state. No comic was doing that at the time. Heck, DC weren't very happy with it. Marston only got through because of his fantastic connections, his great ability as a talker, and he used his degrees to his advantage. He was great at twisting publicity to his own ends. The fact he advertised Wonder Woman first in women's magazines proves he knew how to promote comics. He wrote books defending comics. He had a game plan. He knew what he was doing. So, we have this character who was made deliberately to put on this matriarchal future. Marson died, quite tragically really, well before his time, but DC have tried to bury that history. It's why it's hard to find Golden Age Wonder Woman reprints. So, of course, she went through the Silver Age, where now in the end Wonder Woman was accosted by boys. Who is Wonder Woman going to date? Is she going to date 
plastic boy or neutron fish. And then she went depowered. The white suit phase. Where she became basically Diana and rig out the Avengers. But even then, there was an element of this female character there. In fact, Wonder Woman was only returned to power because Ms. Magazine, who had had the first promotion of Wonder Woman, ran an article saying that Wonder Woman was going to return in a whole new comic book, repowered back to her 40s level. No one had told DC this fact. In fact, DC had never planned this. But they relented. They changed. They went back to 40-star Wonder Woman because they didn't want to risk a PR nightmare. Heck, even Wonder Woman's look is very, very feminist. It's based on these ideals. Wonder Woman, despite her outfit being made on Paradise Island and our island has had no interaction with men up till Steve Trevor, looks like the American flag. Why is that? Why is that? Well, actually, it's to emulate the U.S. personification to Columbia. See, before Uncle Sam came around in the First World War, Columbia was the element of what was the element of Americanness. Columbia is still on many state signs. I can walk around San Francisco and I will see pictures of Columbia sat wearing the helmet of Minera on her throne, overlooking the courts, overlooking the governmental buildings. Wonder Woman was emulating Columbia. Of course, as we've gone on, we've forgotten Columbia. There's a big reason Columbia has been removed by Uncle Sam, and you could say that Columbia really isn't the fighting factions. Uh, there's a definite reason why Uncle Sam is personification of the military now, and Columbia is only ever used for the arts. Columbia had symbols of peace and knowledge. Uncle Sam had all the brutish power of masculinity, and no other symbol. Uncle Sam is a bare knuckle boxer when you look at him. Probably one woman coming back to feminist power was George Perez. He took one woman back to her roots and made these great stories. And if you ever get a chance to read Perez, one woman do. That's when we see a change. The eagle on her front piece becomes two W's. Does that stand for Wonder Woman? No. It stands for Wasps and the Waves. The two female worker groups throughout the Second World War. Wonder Woman is wearing a symbol of showing female solidarity. Those two W's are there to show solidarity to women. To show the power of what women can do when you give them the abilities. There we go. That's a brief, really, history of Wonder Woman. As a character. She was made deliberately to push a new feminine ideal. And it's an ideal that we still need. There are not many great female characters around. DC's continual fridging of Lois Lane. I mean, we haven't really moved on, have we? I mean, Wonder Woman is a character we we need, I think, in comics to balance out the masculinity that we have. It's massive masculinity crisis. And is putting her with Superman and making a big thing of the fact that they can superbone together really the answer to this? No, it's not. It's relegating Wonder Woman to a B-roll character. It's making her Batmite. I mean, back in the 40s, Wonder Woman had her own B-roll character. She had Wonder Girl and Wonder Tot. Wonder Girl is no longer part of the Wonder Woman continuity due to a very strange admin error back in the late 60s. But now Wonder Woman is a B-roll character. She's there for pictures and to be Superman's girl. That's really a massive betrayal of everything she's ever stood for. And it's not development. In fact, it's regressive. It's ignoring it. It's making her... Pretty much big boobs in a who can fly. It's all it's doing to her. It's not making her better, and it's not like the Wonder Woman archetype isn't needed anymore. It is. I mean, there are plenty of women out there who want a hero figure. There are plenty of girls, little girls out there who want a hero figure. 
there are plenty of little boys who are like me who are actually feminine, who really are girls in their head and want and need a female archetype they can see and say, hmm, maybe being a girl isn't weak. Maybe embracing my own femininity isn't a weakness, it's a strength. And we're denying them that archetype. A very important archetype. And I think as we look at the political system, how, even now, how wages for women are treated, we need that powerful female archetype. So, in some ways, to pull myself back on topic, the writer has said a couple of times on Twitter that he wants people to wait and read it, and he's impressed by the very aggressive reaction people have, which is great. I'm glad people have this reaction. And in some ways, I don't blame him. He's given a a thing, a thing to do, and that is more of the DC portrayal of Wonder Woman. I mean, I find it amusing, actually. I was in uh, a toy store yesterday. Yes, that is how I spend my time in toy store. And I end up in the superhero's aisle, and I thought, well, I've got a new apartment. Maybe I'll buy, like, a Wonder Woman figure or something for it. Or maybe they have, like, you know, a good um, old Harley Quinn figure or something. And all the Wonder Woman products were, like, girls' toys with just Wonder Woman glued on them. But it was Golden Age. It was the Golden Age image of Wonder Woman. I found that strange. That's what DC is selling to girls. To girls, we will sell you Golden Age Wonder Woman. In comic books, we will sell you Stepford Woman. There's this bizarre duality in the Wonder Woman franchise, and I, I don't know what they're going to do with it. I think the thing DC don't know what they want to do with it at times. I think they want to embrace Golden Age, but I think they're scared. And I know what Schultz has said that actually it's. Superman is going to be her boyfriend, but I still don't think that makes any sense. I mean, I've never seen how Wonder Woman and Superman can get along as a pairing. I mean, think for a second how Wonder Woman was raised. She was raised in a society that sees men as weak. In fact, when um, Etta Candy goes to Paradise Island, a couple of the Amazons exclaim it to her face. Man's world, girls are weaklings. Man's world has corrupted you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm totally going to go bone the Kryptonian. I mean, no! I mean, she might tie them up because Paradise Island has a BDSM undercurrent that really isn't an undercurrent, but more just a current. Which, of course, was one of Martin's main aims, to promote BDSM, which is a whole different barrel of fish, which I'm not going to go into, but I can probably blame Wonder Woman for the fact that how I spend my Friday evenings is tying up various sexual partners. So what are we going to do with this character is a question. I mean, we can look at back at Injustice, when Injustice Gods Among Us came out, and DC decided to give this new Wonder Woman this idea of Wonder Woman waiting for Lois Lane to die. Yes, the female, the figure of female empowerment is waiting for Lois Lane to snuff it. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense, does it? There's a reason for this. I mean, it seems a determined thing to reduce Wonder Woman to this B-roll character. To create this bizarre, almost stepfordish ability between them. I'm... There's just so much you could do with this and it seems that they're not going to do it I know of course I'm probably going to get comments on this is that we're reacting without seeing the full product well yes I am but I think it's just the, the vague concept and it shows a lot about the image of the DC higher-ups. How they want to portray their canon characters and how they want to use them. And you know what? I think in some ways it's a failure of imagination. In the 40s, comics could change the world. They could do all sorts. That's why Marston used comic books as opposed to novels. 
as opposed to magazines. Because in the 40s, comic books could change the world. Remember, comic books entered the war before America did. And in fact, many historians, and I'm one of them, says that comic books actually made people support, people in America support the war in Europe. Submariner was the first hero to attack the Nazis. Comics could change the goddamn world back in those days. Nowadays, it feels we're regressing with them. They're becoming more base. And I know, and I'm, we can get comments here, there's going to be 50 people saying there are comics that try and change the world. And there are. My God, there are. There are web comics that try and change the world. I mean, The Princess, one of my favourite web comics, that's trying to change gender views. I mean, something like Mouse was trying to change the world. But our main, our main comics, our superhero comics especially, the world power to save, the power to save the world, only exists in the pages now. In no way is it a call to arms to save our world. In no way. I mean, we saw a, after September 11th, we saw a boost in that with the Spider-Man World Trade Center comic, but nowadays it feels that like we're base, we're going back to base. We're going to base to appeal to a shrinking fan base, even though comics are becoming more popular as a medium. We're seeing people regress. Going back into this shell that only 18 to 24 males read comics, so we must have plenty of boning, and every female character must inherently be submissive, meek, and docile. I mean, that's what we're having. We're going back to this very base, very basic comics. God, I would so wish we had a female writer come onto Wonder Woman and just start to tear shit up. To just go. We're having a feminist character again. We're having a character that is going to be a battle cry for women and female-aligned people to go out there and change the universe. To tear down everything that is holding us as a society, as a group of beings, back. And I am going to use this example. I'm going to use these images to convey why we are going to do this. I'm going to make a character who can be held at protests. I mean, during female pay protests, people had posters of Wonder Woman. People were carrying Wonder Woman signs. That's how powerful this image was. This character was. Nowadays, you would not see that. You just wouldn't. Wonder Woman was almost a slang term for female empowerment. You see it used in magazines. The fact you hear, you know, first ladies being described as, as the real Wonder Woman. Yeah, you're not going to hear that today. And that's it. That's my point. I can't see why this is going to work. How is this going to work? And I'm being open-minded, sure, maybe how he said it is. And I know Saul has said he's consulted with various women in his life to make sure that Wonder Woman isn't this sexist character. Yeah, he's trying to make sure it appeals to women, and I think it is. I think... It could be something. And he's already has said that he's going to downgrade uh, Diana to Superman's girlfriend who needs rescuing. And I want to, at the most random point, I'll put a disclaimer here and say, in case a Saul fan is listening, in case randomness gets to Saul, which I don't I hope it isn't, and I hope I said his name correctly. I'm not raging against the guy. I mean, I don't know the guy. I actually haven't read Red Lantern or anything else he's worked on. And my issue isn't with him. I'm not saying you're Satan. I just think it's an overall opinion of how DC as a company and how its writers are forced to portray DC image is a break from what Marston had. And things develop, things change, again, accept this. But 
I think when there is a need for this character, when there is a need for female figures, and when DC has been repeatedly lambasted for its appalling use of female characters, that they're doing this now. It seems to be a very strange time to do it. Especially in the main continuity. I know. I, it could turn out to be great. I mean, I'm probably going to read it. And I mean, I think it's a big point in general, not just of how this is treating Wonder Woman, but how it's treating Lois Lane. And I'm not going to say I'm an expert on Lois Lane, because I'm really not. I'm not an expert on Lois Lane at all. I know very about Lois Lane in overall continuity. Um, just because I've never actually been a Superman fan, really. That's just a personal choice. But the fact that DC continue trying to remove Lois Lane, continually try and... Just think about Lois Lane for a second. Lois Lane was actually very ahead of her time. She was the sassy single female journalist. Sure, she required saving a lot, but a lot of the time she had to be saved from extreme situations because of her uh, want to get the new story. You've seen a lot of um, old Superman books that actually Lois Lane would go above and beyond. So, okay, she needed saving, but she just ran into a building full of 15 supervillains to try and get a story. She wasn't being weak and meek and kidnapped. She was going for it. She was very much, I don't have any powers. I don't care. I'm a journalist. My job is to report this. Onwards! It's inherently stupid and suicidal, but I'm going to do it. I mean, that's one reason I loved Sarah Jane so often, actually. My big thing for loving Sarah Jane Smith was because Okay, she needs saving a hell of a lot, but at the same time, she was never meek and hiding. She was needed to be saved because she had a habit of charging in. Of going, so what? Onwards, you know, I'm... So what, you're a 40-pound killing robot. I'm going to fight you because I can. That's what Lois Lane was, in some ways. So I think doing this with the Superman Wonder Woman actually underlines Lois Lane. It removes another great female character from DC's already dwindling roster. So it could turn out to be a good comic. It really could. I mean... It could be... thing, and I'm kind of happy that Saul has said that... Um, he likes the idea of working Wonder Woman because she means a lot to many people. And she does. To some of us, she means an awful lot. To some of us, she was a character that embodied our own female identity, even when we were told our female identity was wrong. A lot of people, she is a major factor behind women in factories in the war. And I think it's just the erasing of her history. Removing the virtue she was stood for when she was made is the reason this annoys me so much. I think it annoyed a lot of people. When you have this pre-built character and yet she gets the downgrade repeatedly. And in some ways, I could say it's not just Saul. It's the fact that DC repeatedly do this. They repeatedly ship this relationship. They repeatedly reduce Wonder Woman to a girlfriend character over and over and over. This is something that I think points out the issue with DC and how they see Wonder Woman as part of their roster. She's really only there as a heritage character now. She isn't really there as her own fully fledged being. I mean, I could... I could Going for ages comparing the classic Wonder Woman to 52 Wonder Woman and talk about um, how she's become more violent, how she no longer really stands for the ideas of truth and love, which were the underpinning of the Master Wonder Woman idea and the underpinning of the gods concept, which she was famed for. The fact her lasso, her lasso is less used and it's gone from this um, basically lasso of submission. I mean, the lasso used to basically turn you into a flipping zombie 
I can also blame that lasso for my various other fetishes of mine. And, I mean, we've gone from that to basically a lie detector, which is kind of amusing considering Marston made the polygraph test, he was the invention of polygraph. And just how she's been reduced to this much lower, baser, bra and sword concept, as opposed to what she was. But, I think the, well, as usual, the argument is going to be vote for your wallet. If people go out and buy this comic, which they're going to, it's creating enough controversy, so DC will shift units. Then they're going to keep doing this, but if you want to see a Wonder Woman who re embodies those old virtues, whether Saul pulls this off or not, in just a general concept, then it's going to be voting with your wallet, not buying the comic. Until then, I think we can still safely say at least there's Marston's Wonder Woman out there and Perez's Wonder Woman. I'd always recommend Perez's Wonder Woman to show what a female hero who stands for female empowerment can truly mean. And maybe re-embody that bit of the idea that comics can change the world we live.